What's going on guys? So today's plan. I was originally gonna do some body work, but I don't think I wanna do that. Even though it'd be easy to do it upside down, I gotta roll around and I'll just end up banging it all up and screwing stuff up as it is. So my plan, I gotta do just a little bit more welding on the inside of the doors. So I'll do that before I move it, but I cleaned up in the garage a little, made a path. Uh, chassis on stands. So my plan, flip this thing over, uh, hook up to the inching crane, drag it over, plop it down the chassis, then kind of put it right in the middle or whatever, put some wheels and tires on it again. Uh, a few little things, I still gotta finish the firewall and all that, but I think doing that right side up, and then uh, some rust repair and all that in the trunk. So I still gotta do a little messing around out there, build some sort of panel, kind of carry on that way. On the motor, I put it up to the transmission, but uh, the ring gear, the bolts in there were too long, or what I did there, so I gotta do that, which I think I got some fine thread bolts and I gotta drill and tap the motor for that motor plate at some point so I don't know but I'd like to kind of get it in get the body set where it's gonna be uh, I gotta finish making a few tabs for the suspension because everything's just still tack bolted together so make a few gussets and brackets and all that get the rear end sorted just lots of little stuff but I want to get her back together now that all this ugly welding is done start bracing it do all sorts of little things and uh, yeah so I don't really know what the agenda is gonna be other than this sucker is going to go back together and probably a little bit more permanently, right? I'll need some body mounts and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to finish cleaning up the garage. Next thing we see it, I'll roll this sucker over, strap it to the crane and plop her on. Well, she's all back together, at least sitting together, so that's good. Uh, I want to make it a roller, so I'm going to put the wheels and tires back on. I actually I took the cheater slicks off the 55, because they drove like crap, especially in the weather we're having right now, and put a set of just regular radials on. So I put those pie crusts on the steelies for the back, and then the tires that were on the back, the smalls, I put on the front. So I'm hoping I'll be able to put that on there and it'll look okay. Again, because the thing's got that wide track width, I'm hoping that the narrow tires and a little wire in the back, you know, space them out even a little, will kind of soak up some of that look. Otherwise, I'll need to source out a, a narrower axle or, or do something. So that's the plan. Unfortunately, all that junk is in my truck, which is on the street. And the 57 is blocking the way. And it's snowy like crazy out. So at least this thing runs. I think it's going to need a lot of revving and stuff like that to uh, get it to the street. Hopefully it won't get stuck. Back the truck in, unload the wheels and tires, and yeah, start putting this thing back together. Actually went shockingly easy. So there are the cheater slicks, another set of uh, wheels. 
This, uh, we got a new compressor, it works. So I took the old tank, it's actually screwed up at the bottom, it cracked. <clears throat> and it's heavy and it's useless. But I thought I'd make it into some sort of art project. So either I'll have it laying down outside and make it into a Volkswagen bus or stand it up and make like a giant sized minion for the front yard. So yeah, let me know what you think. If I'm crazy, I'm crazy. So be it. But I'm going to fight these tires out. Uh, I don't know if I want to get this tank out or not yet. I'm not feeling overly motivated. I might just live in here for a little bit. But get these out, get them in the car, make some progress. All right, well, I think she looks cool. Still, it's, it's a little nose high in the front now because I put that block in because the suspension had no travel. So I may have to redrill uh, the spring mount to the actual bat wing itself. But overall, it's kind of got the right look. I'm digging on it. I gotta decide how high I want it in the back. I actually don't hate it, to be honest with you. It's a bit of a kind of high boy looking thing, but it'll actually drive nice have a little bit of suspension i think the body's where i gotta have it i gotta do a little googling on some pictures i kind of have it might have to go back just an inch or so but uh yeah work on the motor get that kind of all situated uh unfortunately like i said i gotta take it all apart do the fucking ring gear and uh put the transmission back together so that's a bit of a pain but then i can put that in there mount it properly figure out some sort of mounting tab on my uh cross brace there for the rear suspension then i gotta worry about shocks some sort of pan hard bar and everything because that's not permanent but yeah it's going it's motoring right along i'm pretty stoked on it hopefully now the body won't have to come off too many more times the one door the latch is screwed unfortunately i don't know if the spring inside broke but it won't uh, hold itself closed anymore so that's pain so i just got a zip try holding that one together this one still works i think anyways and it actually looks not too bad with that uh, bottom piece of the door on. So yeah. yeah, I might do a little body work here and there, put the deck lid on, do a little screwing around, but uh, oh yeah, back here needs some body work too. So I don't know what way I'm going to go yet, but uh, it's cold in here, I have the door up, so I'm going to let the garage warm up a little bit, and then I can start uh, monkeying around on something. Alright, it's warm in here. Thought about it. I want a fun job. So, I want to put the motor in this thing again. I just like the way it looked when it was together. The motor mounts are kind of about in some sort of place-ish. So, I want to get that back in. Kind of secure them a little more properly. Because we just kind of tacked them in and it actually fell right out. And, yeah. Then I can make sure the body's where I want it to be. Get the weight in it. See what the front suspension's going to do. See what I want to do with the rear suspension. Cut a couple of coils out until I'm happy with it. Just get it all mocked up. That means transmission has to come off. And I have to rob some bolts out of that motor in the corner. <sighs> That's a pain in the ass. And then I got to drill and tap for the motor plate. Because we're doing the front motor plate there. There was two bolts that just were not drilled out. So there's just bosses there. So I'll have to drill and tap those. So kind of a bit of a tedious thing, but I'll do that. And then uh, Brent cut out these fancy kind of exhaust, whatever, flanges. And we made like the tubes. And I think I wanted to go with that. I was going to buy a set, but then I said, nah, I don't want to spend any money. I'll struggle a little bit. Plus, Amazon and everything, you can't ship anything right now. Or it's like to the end of the month. So I don't have patience for that. And I got a lot of free time right now. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I have a set of junk headers actually on my fence, <laughs> so I might take those off. I don't know how rotted they are, but yeah, I think that's what we're going to do for a little bit, so bear with me. All right, motor and trans are apart. It's definitely going to be a lot easier with a second person, this uh, social distancing's pain. Ah, not to have any friends anyways, but so what I actually want to do, uh, yoinked off the ring gear from that uh, small block Chevy in the corner, or the wall there. 
So that motor originally came with this transmission when I bought the 57 Chevy. Hopefully you guys are up to date on that. This motor I got uh, a few videos ago from those Sobering Boys. So it's a 283 that was in the 68 or something like that Chevy truck. But it had a 3-speed behind it. So when we took the uh, flywheel, whatever you want to call it, off, it had long bolts in it. Whereas when you have a ring gear, it has short bolts side by side. So in turn, it was actually jamming up against the block. Uh, these bolts are too long and it wasn't even tight. Well, maybe it just barely snugged up, but you couldn't actually roll the motor over. And this is actually a fancy uh, SFI certified uh, ring gear. And I want to keep that. So I'm going to switch that one out for the one that was originally in the motor. Put that on and uh yeah use the bolts a little loctite loctite guys put that together wrestle the transmission and motor back together put a few bolts in there because it was missing a couple and then that'll be sorted then i'll drag it out spin around and we'll try our luck at uh tapping out the motor and i might take some of this junk off these hoses i don't know it's all just kind of there i don't think i need it right now put it in yeah so there you go hope you learned something i don't even know what i said All right, motor and trans back together. So when you have the transmission going on the motor, it's got two little dowel pins, you wanna make sure it's on there, kind of thread in a couple bolts, and then once it's up tight, then you can zip it in. You don't wanna pull it in with the bolts, it'll crack the case. So here is our problem. I want to look cool and have a motor plate, or first plate, or whatever it's called, to mount the motor. So typically, small block Chevys have two threaded holes on either side. This one, I guess being a 283, these ones where they should be, don't exist. So I'm gonna mark them, drill them, and tap them. And then I should just be able to, it's just some 3 8 bolts, it's pretty simple. And yeah, bolt that sucker together, and then it's ready to go in the car again, hopefully. All right, so I got the kind of miscellaneous hoses and stuff like that off. Uh, the plates on where those two, uh, Boss, where I just drilled them out so it's super simple. 3 8 is a 516 drill bit, so zip zip. And then I tapped it, cleaned it out with some uh, brake clean. Nothing went in there. Uh, you do have to lose the fuel pump because it won't fit with the uh, this front mount. So I had one of these block off plates, so I just put that on there. I'll run an electric fuel pump. But now I should be able to chain this sucker up, drop her in between the rails. I'm um, hoping. Probably put this thing on stands first just to get the engine crane under it makes life a little easier and yeah just like that Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that was a pain in the ass. I actually think the GoPro died, I had to plug it in. 
So I was wrestling and fighting and holy moly, but uh, two people make this a lot easier. The body was bolted down, so it's flopping all over the place, but uh, get the mounts welded in. I got the motor bolted down, so I'm happy with that. I still got to make a mount for the transmission, but currently it's just sitting, you know, the yoke is sitting on this bar. Uh, so what I'm going to do is build a mount, lift the transmission up a little bit, and then this has to go into a slip yoke, so it should be good. Uh, worst case, I may have to kind of cut that out and, you know, make an L piece, like box it. Uh, but it's not the end of the world. It's not going anywhere. Uh, it's tight right against the firewall. You can see where the distributor is actually inside. So I got some trimming to do there. But uh, that's for another day. What I want to work on next, like I said, make those side pipes. So, uh, yeah, I got the one plate. I think the other plate's in the basket, I hope anyways. So I'm going to get my drill and run out to the fence and start scabbing some uh, header parts. So, see how that goes. Alright. Uh, so, this is the fence of miscellaneous. I found it a long time ago. You can't have stuff in the backyard. Turns out that's garbage. But if you put it on a fence, it becomes art and you're allowed to have it. Who'd have thought? So these are some old headers I had. I put lights in them for some reason. One was rotted out real bad. Oh, that one. So we'll try this. Rip this off the fence and I need these pieces. Chop them up, make some out of it. So I'll get this off and we'll uh, start chopping. So here is the plan. So I got those headers. Uh, so these are the flanges, I bolted one on, and this is a tube we made at Brent's a while ago, so we wrapped it around, actually I believe that axle right there. And uh, yeah, so now the front has one pipe in it, obviously you can see these ones here all have to just basically go in uh, to it, so I'll mark it, kind of cut them out, and then you just jam a baffle from like a muffler in the end, put a turn down or something like that on there. And yeah, that's kind of all there is to it. Now I might have to put a plate on it and then straight down so I have proper exhaust with actual mufflers. I'm not too sure what the laws are going to be with this sucker. But that is kind of the ugly plan. So I just kind of eyeballed it. I had it going at a bit of an angle down and it's kind of following the shape of the uh, cowl. Yeah, I think it looks good. Uh, probably at the end I'll have some sort of turn. If I'm leaving it like this, I'll have a turn out just so the exhaust isn't blowing right in my face. Yeah. So I'm gonna cut the flanges off these and then uh, hopefully clean these up and they're not so completely rusted through I can actually use them. And yeah, start marking, cutting, welding. I'll probably just tack it all on. And yeah, I guess the only thing you gotta be somewhat aware of, I use bolts, I actually do have some uh, like header bolts with the small heads on them. But just be aware you can still get to all those. So these ones, straight out into what I'm thinking is what I'll do. And then that one basically the same. It actually shouldn't be too crazy at all. I just need enough lengths of this stuff, which is I guess, I don't know, one seven eighths or whatever, one three quarter, whatever the standard is. Yeah, I'll get her going. Wheel. I don't know what happened, I was welding there and something popped that scared me a little bit, but uh, so that's kind of the gist of what this junk's going to look like. Uh, I got everything just kind of tacked together, I got to drill some holes or I'll probably torch cut them to be honest with you, but uh, yeah. So I tack welded it all together, so I'm going to leave it attached to the manifold because that's not going to change. So I'll probably end up just kind of marking uh, where the pipes are all going to be and then I can take the cone off 
because uh, I got to finish welding the seam on it. And then cut the holes out, shunk, put it back together, test fit it, uh, give it another couple of tack welds, make sure it's all going to be happy. And then I can take it right off, put it on the bench, and weld the whole thing together like it's 100% permanent. At least that's what my plan is. Okay, so I weld the seam, torch cut a few holes, I just got it on and just tacked it together. Uh, the front has to be kind of caved in or I'll have to build something of sheet metal around it just so it's kind of, because the cone couldn't get small enough when we were trying to bend it, because it's pretty thick steel. But uh, otherwise it's what it is, so I'm just going to take this off real quick and I can weld it on the bench. And yeah, that should turn pretty good. I taped the ends just so they're kind of a clean cut on them. Like I said, I got either a cone off the side or, or maybe a you know T, so it has to go down to the rest of the exhaust. But uh, for now, let's go all her together, bolt it back on, call her D. Well, I got her mostly back together, so the pipe's on. Uh, needs a little bit more welding at the front, but I'm gonna call it there. Uh, needs a bunch more bench work. Uh, I got to do the other side yet. I'm not gonna uh, bore you guys with any more time lapse of that. I think this video is gonna be done here. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I really appreciate the support. Leave a comment, tell your friends, subscribe to the channel. Let's keep this train rolling. Let me know what you think. I like it. The way it's coming out is pretty good. It's a little high. I don't know. I guess once I sit in it and kind of get a feel for it, we'll see how she goes. But I'm really starting to fall in love with this thing, I gotta say. Didn't think I would, but uh, she might be a keeper. All right. See you guys in the next one.